Hello and welcome back to the 10 Pine Podcast. We're here with me, Lucas Normal, and Beefham. All right, lads. This episode is sponsored as normal by Miss Re. And um, we're also here today with um, footballer Lee Molyneux. How are we, mate? X. X footballer. <laughs> <laughs> retired now. Retired. So, so we normally get started off with, like, where did you first start playing and where did the love for football start? Um, do you know what? I don't remember, but my mum and dad tell me. Yeah. I think it was from about three years of age. Yeah? Yeah, just kicking balls, just obsessed. Um, my first team was a team called Wiston Juniors. I'm from Aiton. Yeah. Not from Wiston. <laughs> <laughs> not a wall, um, no. <laughs> I'm from Aiton, but that's a low, not too far away. It's the team, you know, Gerard. Yeah. Yeah, that's where he first started. Um, so, yeah, that was my first little Sunday league side. But to be honest, being honest, I didn't I didn't stay Sunday league long. I think I joined them in eight, and then within 12 months I was picked up by Everton. Yeah. I was only at Everton for a year, and he released me, actually, at first. You're an Everton fan as a kid? Yeah, blue, yeah. All of us are. Um, he's red. Nah, nah both blues. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's <laughs> <right. Yes. laughs> lovely. Um, but yeah, they released me. And I remember, I always remember them saying, um, I wasn't quick enough on my feet. And my dad boxed. Yeah, he was pro. He had me skipping. <laughs> yeah, and then I left Everton and joined um, Wrexham. Mm. Wrexham used to have a satellite group um, at Chilwall. Hope University, yeah, and loads of kids from Liverpool. So I think, you know, kids who being released from Everton and yeah. Liverpool were going there, and we just trained Tuesday, Thursday nights, <laughs> and then um, I remember took a group of us up to actually up to Wrexham, and we signed on. Um, but looking back now, some of the players that were there, there was a lad called Craig Noon. I don't know if you've heard of him. He played for Cardiff, for Cardiff yeah, yeah. yeah, Bolton. Um, and what was the other, there was another lad who ended up making it, and I've sl- it slipped my mind now. But they brought me on loads, honestly. Um, I remember at the time, that must have been about 1998, this. And even then, we had there was an old guy, and we, he used to have us doing like agility stuff and hurdles and ladders. Yeah. Before I'd ever even seen it. I'd, they weren't doing that on Everton. Was that like on air of at that time? Yeah, yeah. yeah it, was, it was all really new. Yeah. And I remember he was doing all that with us, and I remember all uh, my dad being really impressed by it all. And I think that age between nine and ten, I just come on loads. And then I got, I was playing for Heighton Schoolboys, but I was in year five. Yeah. But I was playing for the year, it was a year six group, the under 11s. And then Everton come knocking again. So, so straight back there. I had to make an excuse to Rex and now we couldn't do the travelling because they would have to pay compensation. <laughs> was there no like sort of apprehension going back to Everton because you'd already been released? Because um, I know a lot of people maybe. Do you know what it was? It's probably at that time it was like you know because you're a little kid yeah. and going back to a group and when little boys are settled mm. and you got yeah. a newcomer coming in, one of them, you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. But like going there, turning up again in the trial, I turned up in an Arsenal kit, JVC. I used to, have, <laughs> used to wear mad kits as a kid. <laughs> I had like the Bruce Dortmund one and stuff. I don't know where my dad got them from. But I remember having my trial back at Belfield. Um, and, I th- and I played uh, a friendly match for Sunderland. I remember um, the coach who released me at the time before just said he looks like a completely different lad. You reckon that was because of, like, yeah. what, the experience at Wrexham? Possibly, yeah. Yeah. But I reckon it was just because I was obsessed with football. I was just non-stop practised. Yeah. Honestly, non-stop. Properly obsessed. My mum and dad said that from the age of four I'd learn to go down <laughs> and rewind on a video and watch match today on a Sunday morning. <laughs> He'd record it for me on a video. And I used to get, like, a football encyclopedia every... Christmas, and I'd just study it. I don't know what it was. Clean my boots on a Saturday night. For like an hour, dubbing the lot. Yeah. I was just obsessed with footy. Was it always going to be, like, did you ever think, oh, I might not make it? Was it always um, like, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to make it, I'm going to do this? I don't know whether I thought I'd do it. I always remember going to sleep as a kid. I used to think it in my head. 
I used to think about the journey of going. I used to think I'd play for Juventus. <laughs> <laughs> but no, um, I used to always say I want to be a professional footballer in my head every night before I went to sleep. Um, Were you um, always a left back? Um, back then, yeah. But then, um, only to later stages, in, like mm. not later stages, but midway through my 20s, I moved further up the pitch. Yeah. But um, left back always as a kid, weird position, isn't it? Yeah. Gary Neville said, <laughs> yeah, no one wants to be, what did Carragher say, no one wants to be a Gary Neville. But <laughs> now, I think there's full backs, a proper it's different now, isn't it? position, isn't it? It's now, not if really you're in a good side. So if you look at City side, like Cancelo, and that, they're like, they like midfielders, even like Alexander well, Arnold. They play in, inside, don't they? And he outnumbers teams in midfield that way by doing yeah. his full backs in. So, um, yeah, Alexander Arnold, Robertson, they're great, aren't they? They just have the freedom because the, the team have the ball all game. Yeah. They're just getting on there. They are the width. And, you know, even I'm talking like, this is just me footy talking. Yeah, I'm a blue light, but <laughs> you've got to appreciate the way they play and Salah and Mane come in. Yeah. And they're just like strikers and they're giving the width. They just cross and cross and cross. And but, um, yeah. I think more people now you'd, you'd say that, but back then I don't know what it was. Mm. I just they might have just slots me in there because I was left footed. Yeah, and I just took to the role. But yeah, I was I was always like an attacking full back then. Well, I was like the card to be like at that point though. But like I think now you see like a lot of kids like that. That's their life then for the yeah. next like a lot. I think Everton like oh, I don't know if Liverpool do it. They moved them <coughs> to like different schools so they're all together and yeah, stuff like that as well. It didn't quite happen at my 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 era. I, I, I was my last season was the first year at Finch Farm, but um, we did train a lot from the age of twelve, under twelve. So you had under twelve, thirteens, fourteens, fifteens, and sixteens. No, it weren't. Sorry, it was under thirteens, fourteens. We train together and fifteens and sixteens. We'd be in Monday to Thursday, Friday off, train Saturday morning, game Sunday. So we had Friday off as a kid. Really? It's mad really, isn't it though? Like it's intense, like, do you know what I mean? Especially like a lot of kids get like get dropped, don't they, at the end yeah. of it? And you, you must think like what was all that for? Oh, no. They they need they definitely need to do more stuff to make parents aware. Yeah. I don't think I think the kids just go out and play and enjoy it. Mm. Don't think in their heads they're thinking at that time at nine years old. They maybe wanna grow up and be like the heroes. Yeah. But they're not it's the parents that are thinking about the money and the fame and this and that. Or maybe some parents living their lives, their failed careers, for like a son yeah. or daughter. You know what I mean? And they try and hype them up. Or you know, there's been plenty of players when I was ten, and I don't know, I don't know where they are now. Mm. Who would have been? Everyone talked about this player and that player. Yeah. Honestly, the game's crazy. Do you think it's not always just how mm. good they are? Do you think there's a lot of other factors with it. Loads. Loads. So many. Like what would you say ability. makes a professional footballer apart from that? The obvious, the obvious like talents and stuff. Um, I, th- I think when you get to 14, 15, 16, yeah. being able to grasp, you've got to grow up quick. Mm. You've got to sort of become a man. You, you, your childhood gets forgot about. It's a bit sad thinking about it, you know what I mean? 16 year old kids normally, you know, they're allowed to sit on their Xbox. Yeah. All that they do now, don't they? Or they go out with the mates. I never went out with my mates. I didn't have many mates, being fully honest. Yeah. I can't think of a dead close mate in school. I had friends, mm. but not like a true mate who was there with me every day, you know what I mean? Because I, I'd be, I'd get picked up from school on Everton bus and go to training. I suppose it's one of them that could be quite, like, intimidating for some kids, couldn't it? Because they must think, oh, like, I don't want to hang with him because, like, he's yeah. going to Everton, so, like... Yeah, you don't... You, or they might think, well, he's a titan. Or they might think he's arrogant. So did you get stories spread that? about people that are like successful oh, yeah. in football, isn't that? And it's like, mm. oh yeah, this off him. It's like Chinese whispers. It is. Be just, yeah, yeah. I say that's a lot of people, but also then you do get footballers who give footballers a bad name. But then you got to think he might be one lad out of twenty-five lads in a squad there. He's just a tit. Yeah, and you you, you meet. That's like that about every walk which, of life, though, isn't it? Every job yeah, you don't yeah. like people, isn't it? Yeah. You know what it is. Boils down to look because they get, especially Premier League footballers, they paid well, aren't they? Yeah. You could have a, you could be a nineteen-year-old kid playing the Premier League now who's a millionaire, and as you you get fellas, work hard all week, spend all the money going watching a match, 
and it's just pure jealousy. Mm, yeah. I reckon that's what it boils down to. Um, but yeah, it's not the it's not the lad's fault, is it? It's a it's a multi billion pound business, so. Yeah, he's not going to turn. Say if you're getting off at fifty grand a week at nineteen, yeah, we're not going to say no to it. Like you, but then on the flip side, do you, is it the club's responsibility not to be giving them that, that money at that age? Because mm-hmm. you know, I heard of stories of uh, Loftus Cheek and Christensen before yeah. they'd even played in the youth team under fifteens and sixteens. They'd agreed the professional contracts at Crazy thirty that. grand a week, and they were fifteen. How do you justify that? That's crazy. How do they manage that yeah. money? You know, they must it be. Hasn't t- really is been I don't know them because to either. is the things in place for these people now that are helping these kids put this money away, or because at that even three or four years on that wage, and that's not that 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 would be buttons that wage for the Premier League football now. Like yeah. you could be set for life if you invest that and look after the property. You know what I mean? But you say the football is going skinty. You think? Wow. Do you think paying someone that young sort of like dampens the hunger? It can do, couldn't it? Sure, I I wouldn't know. I've never reached them sorts of figures ever in my life. Yeah, and but then I think it could for some. But then you look at successful sports people, and then money doesn't be like you look at Ronaldo now. Why does he keep doing what he's doing? Why not just go and retire in the sun? Yeah, like I Let think that Rafa awesome. Nadal, Roger Federer. It is something deeply ingrained in them, I reckon, yeah. that makes them like the true to keep that hunger. Mm. And we watch Ramos on Instagram doing his gym sessions. You just think, just have a day off, mate. And, he, and he's not, he's there grinding on every day. He's won everything. He's won a and World yeah. Cup, he's won European Champions. Almost surely Champions one of the most leagues. decorated yeah. footballers ever. But I remember, you know, I'm mates with a lad called Adam Forshaw, who plays for Leeds. Yeah. And um, he was talking to him last year. And he, one of his teammates, Kiko Casilla, he's a goalie. He was at Real, Leeds, yeah. Yeah, he was at Real. And Adam said he was picking his brains. He said, what is it? You know, what are they like? Mm. You know, these top stars. And he said, not only are they gifted technically and genetically gifted from the parents or whatever, but they also have this crazy work rate. They're in the gym every day. They clean. They don't go out bevying. And the multi multi millionaires, they win the Champions League. It's all about they want to win the next one. What is so? What is it? You know, is it where you've brought up from and to see your surroundings, or are you just you have a personality born inside you that you may change when you're it? Look at McGregor now. Has he got that hunger? You don't know, do you? He's just a normal yeah. lad from Dublin, and he is. Don't know. I look at them now, like do you know, Anthony Joshua and that, mm. and I just think. <coughs> Why would you want to get up in the morning and like go for a run in the freezing cold? And do you know what I mean? Yeah, it's it that going back to what you said before. I think that's number one, just pure sacrifice and dedication. Yeah, and just having this pain and desire to want to be the best and something. Do you say you are that then at, at that age, fourteen, fifteen? Um, I think getting to fifteen. I think they, I half knew I was good then. You know, did people speak about you? I got picked for, to play for England that year below. I was the eight, 1989 I was born in. I was picked for the 1988 year group to play in. So I half knew I was doing something right at the time. Yeah. And then I'd say when I got to the youth team, my first year when I left school, well, no, the back end of my last year in school, it's, I was going training with Everton. They were taking me out of school two days a week. And um, then I started bunking off school. And I, I don't know what it was, dude. It felt like a little, I couldn't be asked anymore. Did you think school. I'm definitely going to make it now? So there's no point. I felt like I was on that path. Yeah. Didn't think I was definitely going to be born. I knew I was one of the better players in the country at the time. Everton had offered me a scholarship and a pro at yeah. 15. So I knew that was coming the next part few years of my life, you know what I mean? Mm. Maybe it did have taken my eye off the ball. I can't fully remember being back then, but I reckon so. Yeah, what type so. of players were in like your age group at that point with England um, and, and Everton? The Everton age group, do you know what? No one um no one really went through and made it. I um there was 
the goalie, Jamie Jones, he's got Willie Wiggins goalie now. Yeah. He's had a good career. He's played in League Two and League One and the Championship for, for the last since he was nineteen. I think he left Everton and went to Leighton Orient and become number one at like nineteen, twenty. Yeah. He's had a career, he's still playing now at Wigan. He's <laughs> he's captain at the minute. Um like there was a lad, Sean Densmore. Um he's from Aylwood. And he left Everton and went straight to Altrincham from Everton. Yeah. Like now, kids have fallen down the branches on the way, so they'll go from the Prem maybe to a championship club. Yeah. Doesn't work there, boom, boom, boom. Yeah. But he was like reserve team player of the year. And he was another lad called John Irvin. Again, top player, played for England. He left Everton and went to Bala, who were my last club in the Welsh Premier League. Mm. Straight from that to that. When I, I played with players who were worse than John, and he could have made a living. So I, I don't know whether back then there wasn't as much help, you know, hard getting contacts and clubs now. There's agents everywhere. And if you left Everton or Liverpool now, you might go and get a oh, Do you have an agent at that stage of your career? Yeah, but he wasn't my agent as such. He just gave me free boots. <laughs> just to sell them. <laughs> Proper like classics now as well. Like I, I, I'd love to have now, but yeah, he didn't. He didn't take any money off me. Not, and he was just looked after me to be fair and got me boots. And I think maybe in the hope that I did make it big, then then he'd start taking the money. Then you know. What I mean? Do you know what sort of youth level at Everton? Who was like <clears> the best sort of players you played against for all the clubs? Um. I always say this, everyone asks me this, and um, I always say the best player at like 15, 16, 17, 18 was Sturridge. Yeah. <sighs> he was top drawer, and he was just he was like a man, but he was just class, just goal scorer, goal. You know, he was new, he was dangerous. Yeah. He was class. I played with Theo Walcott. It was just the fastest thing I've ever seen move on. He must have been there in an England team then when you're playing. Well, he, he, I played for him. I played with him at 16 and within 12 months he made the World Cup squad. Yeah, he went. That's mad, that. I know he didn't play, but he went. Yeah, yeah. And I'd played in the tournaments in France the year before him. Can you tell them players even, obviously at that level, everyone's very good, but can you tell they're just elite? Even, do you think like, do you think a kid at 15 <laughs> could be like, the same, not the same as like us, but the same as like other pr- pros. Can you reckon you can make a big improvement to become elite, or do you think you're just elite? Like see, I say, born in you. See, see, I'm not sure on this because the players I played with then, and you look at the players who are in the England squad now. I remember playing against Keane Trippier. He was never made the England youth teams. Yeah. I always thought he's a good little right back in. Mm. He's played for Tottenham and Let's go with it now. You know what I mean? I think a lot of the lads my age who were nowhere near that England team probably at 15, 16, but then kicked on again and found another game maybe at 17, 18, 19. Is Rooney around your age group or was he a bit, oh, is he older? He, yeah, he's older. He's like four years older. I always remember Rooney because I was like four years below him. So I seen him when he was under 16s and I must have been under 13s. So we'd train the opposite time to them. So I had a they train after us, or we train after them. It alternates. They always used to keep him behind and do finishing. And um, everyone just knew. Like, the is one player, like, I would say, at 15, 16, people knew. Because he was playing for the, the youth team, and he? And he was just getting spoke about. He was 15. And he was like a man. He had ears on his chest. He was just next level he was scoring ridiculous amounts of goals for like age groups three years above him yeah well, I heard the story on um, a podcast Kev Campbell was saying like he was coming back from injury himself and then he seen this like kid on the coach and he thought someone had brought the son <laughs> to like you know to come and see the reserve game but it, it was Rooney and he said he like bullied I think it was Southport he <clears> played <throat> he bullied their centre half so like 40 or something like that he still he scored I know he scored unbelievable goals. If you ever watch a goal he scored right in the Youth Cup versus Tottenham. I've seen that. Oh fucking my boss. God. I was a 15-year-old kid at the ball that hard. It's crazy, isn't it? He hits a free kick. He comes back off the walls, but I'm not less than 40 yards out and he just volleys in the top bin. He's just a different specimen. Him. This might sound like a stupid... Played with his brother, John. Sound. Played with him for a couple of years. He's at Stockport now. Yeah, I played at Barrow with him the other year. He's a good lad. 
bit quiet, John, but he loves footy too. It's just, just, yeah. just didn't. Do you think Wayne fully fulfilled his potential? Because a lot of people, that might be a stupid statement. Yeah. <laughs> Man United didn't even get a goal scorer. No, I know what you're saying now. He was on like Messi was on the level. Messi, yeah, like he was spoke about now. Like even I'd say he would have even had more than like your Mbappe and all that. You know. Remember that Euro, so you've been a little bit before your time. But, but, yeah, but I've seen like the seen the highlights. Yeah. Like at 18 to do what he was doing. You probably don't get me wrong, he was probably ahead of Ronaldo. And then Ronaldo so yeah, he at that time you probably would have said he was the one who would have had the Ronaldo career. So I know what you're saying there. Yeah. But he still had you know, he still done England top goal scorer, my new top scorer, Premier League titles, champs. He just didn't do with England, obviously, but no one has yet after. No. Um, yeah, he won, obviously, what, 208 Premier League goals, I think he got. Unbelievable career, but I know what you're saying. Yeah, do you think if he stayed at Everton, obviously he wouldn't have won as much, but do you think, like, Everton fans would respect him more? Like, you know, that's you in that situation, and, like, you're yeah. a lifelong Evertonian, mm-hmm. and then Man United come in. Do you think about staying at Everton? Or is it different when you're actually playing for Everton and you're not like oh stack all the game I, and stuff? Yeah. Well, he's he they are crazy blues, all of them, and he's a mad blue. And he would have been a blue the day he left Everton and went to Man U. And even when I just think he when he kissed the shirt at that time, it was just because he was getting non-stop stick and he was young and yeah. he was angry, when he <laughs> angry man. Um, remember he volleyed Ronaldo down the side. Oh, oh yeah, <laughs> <laughs> that's a straight red now. Um, but no, he's a crazy blue, and at the time we were shite. We aren't great now, but <laughs> we were shite. Then do you know what I mean? Yeah. There was nothing going on, and the club. I reckon even if he wants to stay, the club would have forced us on. I have been the money, didn't we? At that point, yeah. even Newcastle would bid them for him. Imagine if he would have went there. Oh no, I'm mad on that. When's it? Do you like so? When was your first yeah. pro given? Like what? What manager was that? Everton at that point was it? David Moyes. Yeah, yeah, Moyes. Um, well, I I was told that I think I I don't know whether it was the end of me under fifteens year or under sixteens, and he said that David, um, because basically he had offered a youth a YTS, which is a two year youth like in the basically in the youth team for two years and then they decide after your second year whether you're going to get a pro contract. But they'd agreed with me already, so you can't sign a pro contract till you're 17. So when you come out of school, everyone's 16. Yeah. But some lads will turn 17 in the September. Some will won't turn until the next August. Yeah. You know, like that. So I was 17 in the February. So they said, I oh, was only on me youth team wage. I signed me pro on me a week after me 17th birthday. So I was only where some lads... I was playing with. I only had two year YTS contracts, but I had basically two and a half year pro because I had the two years youth team, but they were not with pro wages. And then another, then I got a year pro on top of that. So it was basically a three years, two and a half year pro. Do you know what I mean? So I knew before I even left school, I think it was, that yeah. they were going to offer me that. You know, I think only one or two lads in our team got offered that. It was, must have been what was that like, obviously, because it must be great getting a professional contract anywhere, but mm. especially when, as you've said, you're a big blue, yeah. and you're getting it for like, your boyhood team. Is that like a different kind of feeling? You know what? I, I don't remember it being a, a different like kind of feeling. Mm. I see now, like I, I don't even think I've got pictures of when I signed. I remember when to, I went to Goodison Park with my mum and dad, but I don't even know if I've got a picture of me signing it. I, I, that's all I'd knew my life. All the way through school, I was at Everton, you know, yeah. from yeah. a kid. So that was just the next days. But looking back, you don't realise how big it is. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, I didn't, didn't realise at the time. You're just it's most like lads' yeah. dreams, isn't it, that are Evertonians? Yeah. The same with Liverpool fans. Like, yeah. most people in Liverpool, lads want to be a footballer. Yeah. I know. Um, but I probably didn't re- quite grasp it at the time how big it was. But, um, yeah, it's obviously huge, isn't it? You know what I mean? I wish I'd... I could go back, and, you know, even, I'm not saying things might have been different, but just to get memories and maybe yeah. like pictures and collect the things a bit more because I don't really have much to look back on in that sense. And now everything's on 
you got to get you can watch games back and clips and yeah, I, yeah. I'd love to see old games back you know maybe when you're like 12 and 13 but there's yeah. nothing then nothing. So what happened next then so you've signed your professional contract go, yeah. going forward from that what was the next like year or two like <coughs> or the two seasons after so that? when I left school so we joined together with the youth team the year above me was James Vaughan of, you know Victor and yeah, yeah. yeah. so they were our strike partnership in the youth team so <laughs> we were good yeah. you know what I mean we were good we weren't the best football side, but we were quite fit and physical and all that. Yeah. And um, we had them two up front. They were just bullies. <laughs> they were just, honestly, Victor at 16. That's why they got on the... F- well, Vaughan, he scored his goal against Crystal Palace, didn't he? Yeah. yeah. 16. But we had them, and then they'd come down and play sometimes. And... and um, but then sometimes if you were playing for the reserves, you wouldn't play on a Saturday for the youth team. Yeah. Because mm. that was a Tuesday night or whatever. So the first year I was quite um I was involved in the youth team. I was on the bench for the reserves a lot. And played the odd game. But then in my second year youth team I didn't play much youth team football. I was I was left back for the reserves then. From like seventeen, eighteen, you know. Who was the manager for like the reserves team and youth team? Um then? the youth team manager was um Neil Jusnip, a fella that's, I think he works in the FA now, mm. and Gary Ablett. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Sadly passed away, yeah. I actually train his son now, Fraser. Oh, really? Yeah, yeah. Mm. yeah. But I love Gary. He, he took a liking to me as well, mate. Same position and stuff. Yeah. He always spent time with me. And then Kevin Sheedy come in, our legend. He used to take me out as well, and we'd do practice free kicks. At the time, I didn't think, but then... That's like one of my dad's heroes, and he's an Everton legend. Yeah, and yeah. I'm doing free kicks for Sheedy, probably the best free kick taker ever I've had. Yeah, so, um, and then the youth team, eh, the reserve team manager was a fella called Andy Olden. Old school, tough, his name was Welsh. <laughs> he was like about six foot three, bald, he had all centre half scars everywhere. Actually, he was meant to be in good, but I think he retired early, got like. Had about ten operations on his knee, mm. and he was old school, and his training was hard. Yeah, hard training. Look back, you know what I mean. And now everything's all like a bit more of science, and you got your GPS data and heart rate monitors, and see if you're overtrained and you yeah. pull you out and all that. Then it was just intense. Do you start to do the chores? Because I've seen like going yeah. on the training ground and cleaning yeah. boots and that. That's the that that's great that and probably some youth team lads have never had to experience that now. You know what I mean? But we would we would stay long days in the youth team because we'd have college as well. So even um even when you trained in the morning, then you'd have a gym session or another session in the afternoon. Then you'd have like your shower. Then you'd have to wait till all the jobs are done. Showers cleaned. Boots, yeah. whatever, all different specific jobs. Someone was cleaning the kitchen, you know, and all that. And then by the time you got picked up back by but the buses, it was like half four, quarter five. You'd been there since eight. You know what I mean? Just non-stop all day. But it's good. It's 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 good that ground. And you know what I mean? But then at the same time, um, people fall out of love with it because it's just it's, you've got to be. That's what I mean about mentality. Then you yeah. could be the most talented lad in the world, but if you can't get through them hard days, yeah, do you not work like a sports like psychologist or not on back then? Yeah, so like, do you think some people like fall like f- as you said, fall out of love with the game <laughs> because of how hard that work rate is? You said you're doing like three sessions a day sometimes. Not only that as well, but temptations come into play then, don't they? The mates are going to town, having yeah. a bevy. Girls, this and that, you know what I mean. It must be so hard to resist that though at eighteen. You know what I mean. So you've got to be, you've got to be strong willed. And don't get me wrong, there'll be lads who are going out doing it and still doing okay. Yeah. But are they reaching a the full potential then? You know what I mean. And then there's lads with lesser ability who've probably gone on and made a living out the game professionally, whether they, even not even at the elite level, but mm. I've got a good career in the game because. Playing the championship, League One, you know, you're living, you've got a comfortable lifestyle, yeah. you know what I mean? You know, I know it's short contracts, so you may be worrying when you, your contract's running down, but while you're earning and playing, you know, you're comfortable, your bills are provided, you can provide for your kids, and you have money to rent or buy a house and yeah. stuff, you know what I mean? Do you so think it affects you that much, say, if you go out on a Saturday or something, 
and have like four or five pints. Do you think that re- do you think that <coughs> affects your performance for the next week or so? Doing what I do now and reading and, and looking at it properly, definitely, yeah. Yeah. But at the same time, that having a mental state. So if you feel good, right? Mm. Yeah. That's the biggest thing ever. So I say this, use this as a little example, like so say if for instance McDonald's and you had that three hours before kickoff, but that made you feel unbelievable. Don't get me wrong, I it's looking into the science now, yeah, you wouldn't be doing yourself the best, you know, the best, but if you feel good doing that, then you're going to go on that pitch and you're going to feel good and you feel full of energy. So your mind is so, you know, that's the most important thing. So yeah, I do nutrition plans for people now, but and I've done them for footballers. But I always say, I give advice on match day, but I say, this is just advice. Do what you yeah. want. Some people have mad routines that they like yeah. to do. Certain, certain breakfast that they eat or they eat at this time and that's it. I don't like to interfere with that. Yeah. You know, because it's all about how how do you feel? Do you feel good? And that's more important than anything. But obviously, if you're eating the right things, then yeah, it'll give you the advantage. And maybe not just for that one game. Yeah. But over the course, consistently, month after month after month, you keep doing it. Yeah. It will. You know, y- y- your body, your body will adapt. So if, if you're eating well and clean, and you haven't got ail in your system. And your body's recovering properly, you know. Yeah. And it's taking whatever f- whatever food you're putting in, that's what your body's using to recover with. Basically, yeah. mm. you're eating mackies and KFC. That's what your body is pulling the nutrients from. So that's what that that's how I try and convince people. Because you got to, th- if you think about the yeah. food that you're consuming. Yeah. I was working with Anthony Gordon in the summer in the young weather, Evan. Yeah. And he's 19, and that's. I've never seen a more a kid more switched on at that age in my life. And he even he grasped it young, you know what I mean? And it made me think like if he doesn't make it, it's cause it's cause he's not good enough. It's nothing to do with his attitude because he is spot on. And he said everything I put in my body now, this had a nineteen year old lad. He said everything I put in my body says, Is this gonna benefit me? And that's how he looks at food. That's how, so you get lads like that, that we were saying. Yeah. Who are not, like, where's that come from? That's naturally inside them, you know yeah. what I mean? To be a That's winner. That's an incredible mindset. To, to be a winner, yeah. you know what I mean? To want to be the best. Mm. Be the best. That's him. No, no one's forcing him to say that or do that. He's grasped that himself and he, what, he feels that, you know what I mean? So, whereas another lad, he won't have a, he might not have, he might not think that way, you know, and, Whatever, so that's where I think like mindset or is whether it's on par with ability. Yeah, you, it's just the loads of things that come to it. opportunity of getting a chance to play. You know what I mean? Do you feel like you had the opportunity at Everton? Um, I'm not even gonna say it was bad luck because um, I don't believe in that. But so I was doing well, and I was. Still representing England at under 18s level. So then I was going into me th- what would have been my first year pro, but obviously, well, as we were saying before, I'd signed it earlier, but yeah. say the two years of youth team was up. So, mm-hmm. uh, so then you are reserve team player, then you're too old to play in the youth team. So that year in the pre season, I was like involved with the first team, you know, in pre season. I went down to um, play against Preston, Nottingham Forest. On the pitch with the players, you know, in the yeah. team. That must have been crazy, that. Yeah, that was. That was when I went to Nottingham Forest and in a pre season friendly, it was 4,000 Everton fans. Is that when it was 1 1 when Baxter yeah, scored? Jose scored, yeah. Yeah. Played in that game. And a couple of my mates come down, and that's when it felt. That must have been boss, that. That was unbelievable, that. Because the, the city ground was packed. Mm. They, they were playing the Premier League team, so it must have been 20 odd thousand there. But Everton brought a big following down Friday evening, probably all on the aisles. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean? It was getting close to the season. But so basically at the time then, we were struggling for left backs. So Jolie and Lescott had been playing there. Yeah. I remember 
the month before we were in Austria and he played. Um, we were playing this local Austrian side and it was one all at half time and I'm talking they were crap. <laughs> well, them ones that we beat 22 yeah, 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 one of them. It was yeah, one all. The bar eight. I remember Moise standing up I was sitting there as a kid ready to come on second half and he stood up and he was like do you ever fucking come in my office say to me you want to play centre half again? Because he'd been playing left back. But yeah. I think he'd been telling him, I want to play centre half. <laughs> and he ripped his head off. <laughs> <laughs> he was scary, Moise. Was he? Was he I've there? never been intimidated by a manager. But him, I don't know whether because he was a young lad as well. But when I got up to and we were around him in his presence, he was intimidating. I can imagine him to be you a proper knew, angry at me. Like, you see now, like, Mourinho with the kids hugging him and that. If you walk <laughs> past... Moise in the, in the, he wouldn't even look at you. <laughs> <laughs> I used to think, does he even know my name? But then he did. Yeah. You know, he, he, le- you was know, he sound like, was you alright? Yeah, because when I left, I went on seeing him. Because I still had six months on my contract left. Yeah. I was like, gaffer, you, got, you know, gaffer or boss, because there's a story of someone calling him Moise once. <laughs> 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 Young lad. <laughs> Well, I, I I went in and he gave me the time. He sat down and said, "Listen, got a, <laughs> had a bit of interest. Um, obviously, I mean, I am I mean, your plans not knowing then um, that I wasn't." I said, "You know, if I was to leave, could I leave on a free? And you, or would you be? Do, would you just want with the club on a free?" Yeah. And, he, and he said, "No." That, he, and we had the chat and stuff. And he said, that, "Don't know what did he did agreed like maybe just to sell on." Yeah, maybe ten percent to Southampton. Mm. So if they, Southampton was to sell me, then effort and then the money, but he actually let me go for a no transfer fee, which is good. You know what I mean? Mm. But you see, lads, now in that position, they'd probably go be going for like, you know, a, a figure, yeah. you know, like money. I don't know how much, and I'm not saying I was worth anything. Mm. Worth yeah. not on me, but <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but they probably demand a fee now. You know what I mean? You yeah. see, players. Where I was at in my career then, probably might be moving for like, I don't know, half a mil or a million quid, even though you're not nowhere near worth it, you know what I mean? Yeah. Um, but so he was, he, I, I fortunately le- I left on a free and he was, and, and he was really nice with me then. He, and I remember him having a, having a talk and stuff and just said like he thought I was a good player and stuff, but obviously, but going back, you know, at the time in the pre-season, so at the time then, so there was only Nuno Valente, remember him? Yeah, yeah. And he come back pre season about fifteen stone. <laughs> <laughs> he was like thirty two. I was thinking that I got my head on it and I was like thinking not thinking would I play, but yeah. could I get a chance here, do you know what I mean? And I played all pre season and stuff. And then first game of the season, um, was it Blackburn and Jose played? Yeah, I got beat free too. So, <laughs> yeah, so that is when I half uh, thought because if Jose played left mid, mm, and I was like yeah. two or three, two years old, Jose, and I thought if he, I'm a left back, but I could play left mid. Jose at the time was a striker or the ten, but yeah. he put him left mid. Mm. So I thought, there you go, he's you know. Yeah. But Jose he was a cracking player, so it wasn't that. It was just that's my position. So I thought in my own head, yeah, that I'm not really gonna get a chance here. Mm. And then I travelled to West Brom, and my shirt was up in the changes, number forty three, Molyneux. Yeah, we had like a yellow kit. Your Kubu scored. Yeah, yeah. I think we won two nil or one nil. Two one it was. Two one, you know. Yeah, don't yeah. 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 I'm not savvy, you know. But the yacht scored, yeah, but. I would have been on the bench if Phil Neville wasn't fit. And he, busy Phil Neville, said, yeah, no. <laughs> Done a fitness test before, probably got a foot about that big. I think he'd be and he said, yeah, I'm fine, gaffer. Proper busy. And I thought, ah. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> and I never got that shit. Because oh. I didn't think at the time, I thought, maybe would this happen again? Yeah. And um, unfortunately, it didn't. And then I just played in reserve then. But I got injured. Then I will. Uh, I got injured at the end of pre season, or well, a couple of games into the season. Sorry, mm-hmm. and I was doing all right. Like I said, I went to West Brom. That was early on in the season. Then I got injured, and I then 
I had to have a back operation. And I was out, I missed that full season then. But then he, he signed Leighton Baines. Oh. Baines, he weren't playing at the time when he first came in. Yeah. But then, he obviously, look, he's my hero. I, I love yeah. him. I still see him, you, you know, he's, he's, I see him in town all the time and he'll stop and talk to me. And uh, he was a boss lad, but he's one of me, he was a player. He's my favourite ever, Evan player. And he was only a couple of years older than me, and I probably yeah. looked up to him, you know what I mean? He got released by Evan, didn't he, and got re-signed? Yeah, and then he went to Wigan and yeah. then got re-signed. But, um, so obviously, you know, but I, well, I, then I always, don't always think I don't think it's bad at all, but I have thoughts about it, whereas I thought, if I wouldn't have got injured there and ruled out for the season, mm-hmm. would he have gone and still bought a left-back? Chances yeah. are, yeah, probably. Yeah. But in the meantime, would I have had a chance at going off and go at left back mm. if I was fit? And mm. maybe they were in the middle of signing Baines and you might have got thrown in the deep end. Yeah. But that wasn't Moise's style. He put Victor and Vaughan in, but they were like ah, big lads, you know what I mean? Yeah. <laughs> Don't get me wrong, I was well developed at 15, 16, 17, just like the size I am now, like yeah. 5, 10. Yeah. Probably similar build. And I was only young, you know what I mean? So, I, you know, I weren't like I was small, like Leighton Baines was smaller than me, but I think if you got, he was going to give a young lad a go, he'd have to be, you know. Yeah, yeah. And you give Jose a go, but Jose was technically brilliant, you mm, know what I mean? Yeah. And then he brought Jack through, Jack Rodwell, but Jack was like six foot two, six foot three, mm. big lad, you know what I mean? Yeah. Um, and then the, no one really else had a go then, like from my, my time. And then it went on a bit. And then uh, that, that next group of players all got to go in the Europa League, didn't they? Like James Wallace and Bidwell yeah. and mm. Shane Duffy, Toto. All a 92-year group and they all played in that Europa League for sure. It's just like, so we just, it, isn't it? It's just, just like bits of time. And then it, cause we, were, we weren't even nowhere near the Europa League then. Yeah. You know what I mean? So would you have played in a dead dead rubber or whatever? You don't yeah. uh, You don't know. But you know what? I don't, um, it doesn't phase me one little bit because... I've got four children, so I always think if I were to play for Evan, would I have had these yeah, kids? Yeah. You know what I mean? So it doesn't bother me in the slightest. Mm. I have no regrets or um at all. It doesn't upset me at all. I just feel grateful, you know, that I've played for yeah. Everton and mm. actually travelled think and being in the you know, as a fan, imagine you just got asked to travel and be in the changes on a yeah, yeah. match day and all that. It'd be unbelievable, that. wouldn't it? So I think I'm just grateful for that, you know what I mean? And that that child of getting playing and having the Ev- new Everton track in Everton training kids every year and yeah. you don't think yeah. but looking back now and playing in the, all these going to like Sunderland on a Sunday or down to Aston Villa yeah you know what I mean yeah. so it was great great memories then you went to Southampton mm-hmm. was Peter Reid the manager there at no the time, that no? was um, that was when I went left Southampton went to Plymouth mm-hmm. Southampton um, mad how I got signed by them <laughs> playing in reserve game. Yeah. Halton versus Newcastle. And I think they, I don't know why this Dutch agent was there. I don't know whether he was watching someone else or whatever. But anyway, we won 4 0. Remember Andy Gardner? Yeah. Oh, we yeah. got him. <laughs> <laughs> he played in that game. But I had a good game. I had like to set two assists up. Then after the game, I just come out, went to get back on the coach, and some guy pulled me. He's like, you interested in going to South, <laughs> Southampton? <laughs> Some Dutch accents. Sounded Indian, that is. <laughs> um, and he said, um, would you be interested? And I was just, oh, this is a wind up this. Mm. But my dad was there as well. And I think he, I don't know why, but maybe my dad looks to spit to me. So so people <laughs> say, so maybe he, he no clocked or something, yeah. you know what I mean? But my dad got speaking to him. He said, would you be interested? And I was thinking... Championship at the side, but you know, the, as a kid, me growing up, Southampton was always a Premier League club, you know. Yeah, let's see, yeah, not anything. Yeah, and it was th- like the month before that, I think it was like I was gonna go on loan to Huddersfield in League One, but it just didn't happen. The loans were very, very rare then, yeah, you know, and that's one good thing that they're doing now, you know, the loan and more kids out and getting that valuable experience. All kids are getting found out. They got a good reputation and they're going down. So I always think the cream rises to the top. Yeah. Some lads get a chance, like Trent goes straight in. But I think even if he would have got loaned out, he still would have looked yeah. great at any level. Well, I, I do, Harry Kane, I, didn't he? Yeah, he I do. Was... 
I do believe that like the cream will if you are yeah. if you are destined and you're good enough, you will get there, you know what I mean? Yeah. Um, and you'll impress at any level. So I've played against lads in League Two who've had say come down from the Prem and you see the quality. Mm. So I just think they'd they'd go to the top. But yeah. Anyway, so he said you're interested because at the time they were cutting budgets. They wanted a young team, build a young side to then maybe make money, you know, sell players on. But at the time, like that was the, when like, Lalana was there, he was my age, Morgan Schneiderlin. So they actually, you know, in a way, yeah. they did do it, what yeah. they set out to do. But he brought me in in the January, as I said, I asked, could I leave on a free? And I got sorted and I joined on the 2nd of January. And then the day after, I was on, like, I played in front of, like, must have been 100 people at night. Mm. And three weeks later, I was on the bench at St. Mary's against Man U in the FA Cup. Oh, and I was warming that. up on the next to Rooney, and it was 35,000 seater. I was like, <laughs> what? <laughs> I like that. Your life can change yeah. in football. And I was warming up. I didn't get on, but I was went straight into the squad. Because I remember I was warming up and I said to Rooney, can I have your shirt after the game? And I think he <laughs> clocked I was a scouser and he went, yeah, lad. But then he got on the pitch and I didn't. So yeah. then after the final whistle, everyone ran to him. One of my mates got a shirt. He probably forgot that he'd said yeah to me. <laughs> I was gutted. Um, and then he was only a few shit players left, so I didn't bother asking him. <laughs> <laughs> Anderson or something. <laughs> <laughs> Um, and then the we and then on the f- that was on a Sunday evening, and then on a Saturday, yeah, we t- on a Friday we travelled up to Barnsley, and then in the morning the manager pulled me. He's this Dutch guy who's mad. He's played for Holland in like the seventy four World Cup or something. Jan manager Paul, did, yeah. yeah, Jan Paul Fleet his name was, and he was man. He got this was like the January, so we've been manager since the August. He hadn't started great, but they were playing nice footy. And they were young side, you know what I mean? So they get applauded for that, but they were struggling down the bottom. He used to have a, he used to have a Siggy Brown leather jacket. <laughs> Old Lex was hanging off and just dead, <laughs> dead loose. He stunk of Siggies and coffee. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Prophet must have just smoked. Well, back then, like Cruyff and all that smoke, <laughs> didn't he? Um, and he said, are you ready to play? And I was like, yeah. This was like was half ten on a Saturday morning. So then... Before I knew it, I texted my mum and dad, and they flew in a car from Liverpool to Barnsley, mm. and actually caught me professional debut, and, we, and, I, and I played, and we won one nil. Um, David McGoldrick scored, you know, he was our chef, you yeah. know. Oh yeah. Yeah, we won one nil. Oh, his man was the first, and then and then I looked the next day, and I got like a seven in the paper. You know, the first time <laughs> I've ever got a ranking, <laughs> and I was made up, and I just said I had like a, and I had this, you know, I had a solid debut. And then I was in the side then. Mm-hmm. Then I played the following Saturday, home to Doncaster. And because they were struggling, and I don't know where the Southampton put a, a deal on, but it was, they f- filled the stadium. Yeah. So I'm yeah. playing at home, my home debut. They don't know who I am, just a young mm-hmm. kid from Everton. And I'm playing in front of 35,000 people. I got beat 2 1, and there was groans and all that. And yeah. But the difference from playing in front of no one to then. You know, you Do you notice how the crowd reacting though? Yeah, yeah, you notice the, the reactions, but you know when you're playing, you just you know it's loud and that. Yeah. I've still played even further on my career. I went down, played at Portsmouth loads, they fill it every time. There's twenty thousand. Yeah. But they Portsmouth hated me because I was ex Southampton. <laughs> down I go and take the phone, they're like, Molling you, you're shit. <laughs> <laughs> Can <laughs> like all that, honestly, they hated me. What's the funniest yeah. thing which you ever got sheltered at you? Oh, I don't know. I can't think off the top of my head. Um, <laughs> you ever turned around yeah. and said anything back? No. No. <laughs> used to smile. <laughs> um, I was saying before, my ex teammate, Kev Ellison, he's a proper wind up on what he used to do because he gets stick and he used to sing, like, because they you know the um, what's the f- ball he won off Harry Potter? Yeah, he, <laughs> by, he used to sing Harry Potter, he's coming for you and all that. And when the ball used to go out, because I used to play behind him at left back sometimes, he'd pick it up and run down the line dead quick like he was going to take a foul and all the car go, Hey, bring him back! And he'd turn around and just like, <laughs> one of the best. No, he used to have proper like, banter with them, but 
I didn't bother yet. He used to just say, like, oh, you shit, or, you know, that part of him because I was like Southampton. But um, I remember I scored for Morecambe. They were going for promotional league two, and I scored a last minute equaliser to stop them getting the top <laughs> three. It was about eight games to go. And my Twitter blew up that night, all Southampton fans saying, <laughs> we shit for us, but you're stopping them from going up. Because <laughs> <laughs> um, they hate each other. Is it bad there, Arvel? Yeah. Yeah, proper hatred. Obviously, all our mates are Reds and that army. Yeah. We have a bit of man and that, but that's proper. They hate, hate each other. You never see Evan on Liverpool fans having a fight, but like they, they've always been in different leagues. They never really met. Mm. You know what I mean? Even when Pompey were in the Prem, Southampton were down here and League yeah. One, weren't they? Then such look, roles reversed now, haven't they? But they met in the FA Cup once while I was there. I wasn't in the squad. So a year later, and like there was police escort, police, and they were all the Pompey because I live right by two minutes from the ground. Down, like there was like a little bay area right on the, the grounds, right down that end, and like. Pompey fans were walking on the middle of the streets with the big drum and he was proper police and all that and then he was like they decided to have and then um, yeah they hate each other then but Southampton so in my fifth game in only my fifth game I played at Norwich as well away that was that was one that was good that was that was packed out Um, and then we played against Swansea Martinez was manager yeah. they were good he had them playing footy. They had a reputation of playing footy. He had some good players, like even players that went on again, like little Leon Britton, Joe yeah. Allen, Ashley Williams, a Yangel Rangel, Jordi Gomez, and they popped it. They played you get proper them promoted soccer. from League One as well, did he? Yeah, so, yeah I think yeah. so, yeah. League One and then Champ. But they played proper soccer, popping it. And I got a red card after 55 minutes, <laughs> two yellows. Just I was a rash. I was so aggressive back then, and then I learned later on in my career, you know, playing that left back, I would to just take your time, and as long as he's not beating you and you've done your job, if you force him back, but I was like, bam, that and that, and I used to love getting, you know, and being dead aggressive, and yeah. that. maybe wanting to be known as that as well, like aggressive up the arse. I used to love Ashley Cole. You see the way he was, you know, like dead aggressive and ratty. Um. But yeah, I just got that after. I would, would never have got red card for that five, six, seven years later. Do you know yeah. what I mean? Mm. Was it like getting a red just, card? Oh, uh, th- that 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 one was. I was just, I was so like you proper shit yourself because at fifty five minutes, it was one all, and then I you can't come out and watch the game. You didn't have changes. Yeah, and then they go two one up, and you know playing for Southampton. 35, 40, 50,000 fans. Luckily, social media wasn't quite there then. Yeah. Only Twitter come in about, probably about 2010 when people started to get active on it. This was the year before. And um, and people had Facebook, but not they had, there was no trolls about it. I don't remember at the time. It was just the newspapers then, weren't it? You yeah, know, the, yeah. the, the local paper. Yeah. It was the local papers called the Echo too. You would have got slated and that, or someone might have noticed in the street, you know what I mean? You just worried about that, maybe a little bit. Did you ever get that off anyone, someone like saying something <coughs> to you in the street? Um, do you know what? I, I never did, you know. Um, never did, luckily enough. Um, because after that, I was froze out then. Because mm. the manager got sacked as well after that game, and he's the one who brought me in. I got red carded, but we ended up drawing to all. Yeah. And then the lad who played the left back the game after, I think he'd done all right. And I didn't make another match that he squad for the rest of the year. Training him with the first team every day. Yeah. <laughs> but didn't make a match day squad. And then that is when I fucked up then. Because that summer, I'd still had two years left on a contract. And all I was thinking, I'm on good money here. Yeah. I'll just, I wasn't, this is when my life changed when I started. Uh, away in the team of Southampton. There, then, me now, with my mindset, I would have tried to get out on loan. Yeah. Because no one really might have matched your wages, so you could have stayed on the same, but I would have went out and got games, games, and then set yourself up. And all i done for that year then, because in that summer, Alan Pardew come in, and he, he pulled like eight of his first day, 
He just said, boys, use aren't in my plans. Use a welcome to go and join other clubs on a free. Yeah. But I thought, I'm not going to get this money. And a couple of lads who are back in the career on big money going, I'm not going nowhere. And we we would train, we call, we call ourselves the bomb squad. <laughs> <laughs> so you had like the first team squad, the bomb squad, <laughs> and then like the youth team yeah. on three pitches. And we used to have like an our um, coach takers, Stuart, his name was Scottish, who'd been there for like 20 years and he was sound. And he actually really liked me because that summer I was playing again and I got back in the fold. The manager had gone, that's Stu, he was in charge, I forget his second name. And he played me the Ajax a week out before the season, about to start. So I thought, I could be in here. Yeah. But Pardew was getting announced that day, and he was watching the stands. Suarez scored a hat trick after like 20 minutes. And I got took off at half time. Well, he placed everyone at half time, everyone played half a game each. And then it was on the Monday. He pulled like eight of us and said, use our enemy plans. I should have went on loan. Yeah. You know what I mean? Um, but all I'd done that year was just went in because all we had to do was train for an hour. They weren't asked about us. Go in. We just had to go and train just to not get fined. Stu was sound us. He'd give us easy sessions. So we weren't getting any fitter. We weren't improving. And I was only like 19, 20. I should have been like. Now, I think I was a long lad living down there. Now, I would have dedicated myself and went that... I would have spent my full day there because I was going home to do what? Empty flat. What was it like though, about that age moving that far away, isn't it? Oh, well, and things don't really phase me, you know what I mean? I didn't overthink it at the time. And I was just like, sad. My dad come down with me for a few days and then it was like, I was in a hotel then for two months. Mm. Mm. But to be honest, that being at clubs like that, they do everything for you. So next thing I was like, I want a flat to the secretary or whatever you ever saw us there and then a couple of days later they go right we've got choice six flats here for you and you just take it out of your wages you don't have to go and don't have to fend for yourself and yeah. do nothing at yeah. them it's like they do everything for you you know what I mean mm. which is wrong as well you should learn how to have to pay bills and go do things yourself you know what I mean and yeah. all that but I suppose they just want to make the players as comfortable as possible too yeah. Yeah. especially when like, you get foreign lads coming over who'd struggle that's why they employ people to help with that. But you're forgetting your learning life skills there too. So you just, anyway, yeah. Um, so yeah, I just lived down there on my own. I had a, you know what, I was spending, I got this massive flat, like two bedrooms, en suite in both of them. Big balcony. I was living on my own. You know, we look back and think, I wish I just would have lived off button, saved yeah. all my wages, just lived in a little bed sit or something, because yeah. I was doing down there just to play football. That should have been my mindset. Mm. Yeah. And all it was down there, there was, it was down there just to like, well, I did go down to play footy and then I went in, so I'd, I'd give up. Give up. I was a little loser. Mm. One just enjoyed going out with the lads because we were all a young team. But it was different for me because I went in the team, they were in the team. So if they go out and start a bevy on a Saturday, the sound because they were back playing and all that. But me, it's just a vicious cycle. So then it started going out Tuesday nights. Because we'd have Wednesday off. Mm. And then you go out on a Saturday. Then it was like going out on a Sunday. I had the lads all day. I watched the footy, all this. Yeah. Which is sound for any normal 19, 20 year old. But I was a professional footballer. You can't do it. You know what I mean? And you think you're soft like they don't know. They know. It only takes one person in a bar to go to Southampton plays in here. Gets back to the club. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I think you're not, you know what I mean? They're not daft, you know. So that was basically my life then for that next 12 months. Um, training. Didn't play. We didn't have a reserve team. Didn't go knocking on the door saying, going to go on loan. They were just paying me wages. We was in this little bomb squad and it was just going out three times a week. Was no one sort of like checking up on you in that? Oh, my mum and dad said, but I used to just turn my phone stuff do you know what I mean like I would not text them do you feel like if you live say for example in the north west or something mm. that wouldn't have happened as much yeah that's another thing maybe like I was 19 then Southampton I, I asked for that flat and then really should they have gone no we'll put you in with a family you're 19 yeah I think of a 19 year old lad now and I was a manager of a club I go get him in with a family for a year yeah and then slowly integrate them you know what I it's mean it's not around the corner is it it's like nearly no. in France <laughs> I know Really, <laughs> it is. Do you know what I mean? And I think 
I was a bit more old school back then. Now they probably do have that sort of things in place. Yeah. Someone checking up on you every day, a driver to pick you up every day, mm. and all that, you know, to so you're not never late and all that. Yeah. Um, and stuff. And now I you even have like lads staying, don't they, and doing cooking classes and all that. Mm. You just eat out then. You know what I mean? You couldn't cook, couldn't be asked to cook. You had the money to go out and eat, so we thought be the Nando's or the restaurants or yeah. you know what I mean? It was just all you get yourself into laziness. And I just think I that was the one time I think back and think you little fucking loser. <laughs> why don't you just get your head down, see even if you didn't get another chance, but why don't you got yourself out on loan, play games, yeah. build your games up. You know what I mean? And but I just was just happy to sit off and not be picked because it was like you've got two years left. Then before, you know, then next summer, I still had a year left. But then that's when you're like, right, we come to an agreement, you know, and pay up your contract. So you come to like a settlement fee, whereas you say you're earning this money and over the 12 months we'll offer you this percentage in a lump sum. Yeah, yeah. That can be good sometimes because then you, you've already got a club lined up. So you're going into another club with a lump sum. So people have had payoffs in there. People have done well off them. You may be going to a club, not working out, three-year contract, two years left. They might go, we'll give them 15 months up front mm. in a big lump sum. You know what I mean? Um, yeah, if it happened. But, um, so, yeah, I come to an agreement and then I left Southampton and then I joined Plymouth. And Peter Reid was my manager then. Yeah. Scouser, blue. So I thought, Pard, you ate at Scousers. Peter Reid yeah. told, yeah. told me that <laughs> when I joined. He spat at Peter Reid in a match. Did when he, he was yeah? at Palace, yeah. I think Reid was at City at the time. Later yeah. on when he left Devon, he said yeah. he spat at him, called him like a scout, whatever. He just seemed nah. like a pute that part. Oh when he done that dancer in the FA Cup final, and oh, then they got beat. Nah, he, <laughs> I'm telling you now, he's chocolate him. He eats himself. <laughs> he does look like that type of fellow yeah. that loves himself. Like, oh, we got the John- Johnson's Paint Trophy final, right? And Calvin Davis was our captain, the goalie, Calvin Davis. And I remember him speaking to the lads in the changes, and he said, I'm going to go and ask the gaffer, and maybe get some suit sorted for the day. You know, proper Wembley, the new yeah. Wembley. Yeah. Southampton sold like 45,000 tickets playing Carlisle. He would sold like. The attendance that day was like seventy odd thousand. So he asked, he asked Pardew about whether it suits, and he was like, "Ah, oh, fuck that." He said, "I've managed an FA Cup final. That's what you wear suits." <laughs> oh, no, 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 trackies. Oh, what a tosser! Oh. He turned up the first day. Bear in mind, we got relegated from the Championship to League One. Yeah, lads, like League One football, right? Lads, would, don't get me wrong, Southampton was still paying well in that. But lads had normal cars, you know what I mean? Golfs and this and that. Yeah. He turned up in a drop top Ferrari first <laughs> as a League One manager. Shades on and that. Oh, okay. Oh, he's a beaut. I hate him. I hate him. Not not even for the fact that I wouldn't have picked me at the time, do you know what I mean? Mm. Just the way he is. He's a, just, he just look. he's a slime ball, isn't he? He's just, <laughs> I've always hated them. He makes out he's a nice guy. He's, he's a tit. Where's he at now? Was there someone in a dinner? I guess someone went and he lost. Oh, in yeah. Holland, yeah. Or he got, got sacked and got elevators. Yeah. Pff, don't know. He just. Um, but I don't even. He didn't even get them up, did he? It was Nigel Adkins who yeah. got them yeah, up. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then the Pochettino you know, coming out. To that. be fair, yeah. yeah. He, 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 um, he bought Lambert and that, you know what I mean? Mm, so yeah. he. Ricky Lambert, but to be honest. Ricky Lambert was scoring goals in League One at the time. So you'd go, right, we're in League One. He was the best striker in League One. Maybe anyone could have got him. I don't know whether it was good scouting or whatever. But he signed Lambert. He put a good side together, but he just didn't get them up. He brought Oxley Chamberlain through. Yeah. And, uh, Ricky Lambert. He had a good think about the League's One team then. It was like Ricky Lambert. Jose Fonte plays for Portugal now. Radi Jaidi. Play for Bolton and all that. Um, Is Lalana still there? Lalana was captain. Was um, he? Was he like? Could you tell he was going to be a Premier League player? No, he went to Liverpool for twenty five mil, and you never playing with them. Think this lad's worth twenty five mil. Yeah, yeah. But he improved every year. He got better every year. Do you know what I mean? Schneider on the same. 
Like Stadlum that. was excellent, you know. Yeah. I know he got stuck by us. Mm. Just gets sent off you know, all the time. Sent off, <laughs> ill-disciplined. But at 18, 19, 20, in League One, he was spraying balls about for fun. Yeah. Did he come you, the you know, even then, like, he's not a top Premier League player. Yeah. But even there, a Premier League player, the touch and everything, the way they slap a pass in. Yeah. You know, he come through at Strasbourg. He got bought by Southampton for 900 grand or something. But he kept hold a lot of them good players. So that team got them up. Oxley chain was then come through. Jason Punchin, he was good, mm. really good. And another striker, Lee Barnard, up from Ricky Lambert. Lambert was just a goal machine. Ricky Lambert was good. Mm. He was honestly. So that team got up, and then they just went on again, didn't they? And then got probably got, and then he got these Swiss investors, and then slowly, and they got, and then um, you know what, and then. It was short lived me time there. Oh, it was. I was a lot right there a while, but I only played five, six games for them. I still always look out for them, do you know what I mean? Yeah. I've yeah. got a little soft spot for them. Um, it's good. It's good looking back, do you know what I mean? You say yeah. you play yeah. for Southampton, sounds mad, do you know what I mean? Because mm. you're the proper established Premier League yeah, team now, yeah. aren't you? People, some people won't even remember them in League One or the bottom of the Championship. But I've played in a pack St. Mary's for Southampton, do you know what I mean? Yeah. It's mad. So sometimes you still think back and go, yeah, you know, still done that, even if it was once or... No one can, like, take away from yeah, you, yeah. Like. You know, and you go back to when I was a kid, saying I wanted to be a professional football in my head. I was, you yeah. know what I mean? Yeah. So that's what I asked for and I got it. Whether I ever hit my true potential and heights, then you'll never know. Yeah. But, and I'm not bothered now because... I'm happy the way I'm meant to be where I'm meant to be right now. I'm meant to be here right now with you. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> That's how I believe, you know what I mean? I'm yeah. here for this. I read that where you now for this reason. We're speaking for this reason. I, I have my kids and this and that for this reason. So, so never, don't ever regret it. It was just, it was, it was good times and played in some great games. And even then, a bit later on in my career, you know what I mean? I was more regular and more experienced pro. Yeah. Each time you'd kick yourself and think, oh, I wish I knew this one, that, but not regret as sort, you know what I mean? You just think, because I'm helping kids, young lads now, mm. who are in, was in my position, you know what I mean? Yeah. yeah. I'm trying to get them to grasp it. What was your favourite club that you played for? Obviously, apart from being an Everton fan, yeah. but... Um, Achy. Yeah. Achrington, yeah. I have, I have an unbelievable rapport with their fans still. They love me, you know what I mean? And um, I went there. I got out of jail in 2012. It's done like 18 months in jail. Got out. Um, Obviously, I'd only been at Southampton, Plymouth. Then went to jail. So I was 23. Probably had about 25 games professionally under my belt. I know the lads then would have had about 100. Yeah. yeah. So I'd missed out, basically. But in my head at the time, this is when I switched on then. It's a big wake-up call. I treated it like... treated it like I said to myself, I'm injured. And yeah. how fit can I get now? And in there, I met fellas who were like... I went away at 22 when I was a kid, but I felt like I'd, I was quite mature. Because I've lived away and I had to grow up and I've been around men and changing rooms at 18, 19, 20. So I knew how to, you know, I didn't feel like a young 22. I felt like an old 22. So actually got on like I've done around with 40 year old fellas in jail, do you know what I mean? A couple mm. of them knew me dad, luckily enough. So it was always all right. Never had one bit of bother. Because I'm not that type, do you know what I mean? I would never get involved. Like, you hear stories on different wings of people fighting and this and that. Yeah. But I, I always just get my head down and go into the gym and work and just normal. I think you get respect that way. And then, you know... Did they play on... Like, this might sound stupid. Did they play any footy in the... Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, later on, later on, when I got to me open prison, yeah. yeah. Me and Troy Deeney were up front and again. That's <laughs> 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 what <Isn't it? laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, with the outside teams would come in and play us. Yeah. I'm Deanie, me and so Deanie up top. <laughs> <laughs> what was he like? He sounds. Um, he, he, a bit arrogant, like. He was yeah. arrogant. But he, he was sound. On the pitch, yeah. He was sound. He was sound. And you know why? He, he, afterwards, he, he still stayed in touch for a good few years. 
on Twitter and yeah, that, you know what I mean? Yeah. And he'd send me the odd message, then slowly he would, uh, he went, he's like, you know what, I've been playing the plan for years, yeah. but yeah. That, that's what wound me up a bit, the, what he went away for, he got 10 weeks, so I'd done the same thing as him, and got sentenced three years ago. But, again, I don't regret it, because it did change my life. Mm, yeah. As harsh as a lesson it was, changed my life and I've become a better person for it and I learned a lot about training for the first time because that's all you had in there yeah. really <laughs> with Jim and I got him this guy Paul Wilson his name was he was doing like 18 years for like I don't know distribution of guns or whatever mm. he's quite a well known figure in Liverpool and he was my pad mate he was like that though, a bodybuilder shape. I yeah. didn't want to be that shape, do you know what I mean? But he taught yeah. me about weight training. And I'd never done weight training really. Because even when we were having I was always fit. Naturally very fit. And quietly naturally quite strong, like skinny strong. Like my dad, he's only my eye five ten. Yeah. He boxed. But you know when you just you shake me dad's hands to like shovel. Yeah. <laughs> you know, when you yeah. grip yeah. someone and you feel a strength. He's just naturally strong and I felt like I was that way I didn't never really done weights you know what I mean but I had always like on the pitch and I felt strong and stuff so I never really bothered and that's what another little thing that I should have done you know when I was younger yeah. with but anyway I learned about it in training and really responded well to weight training and then got a got like addicted to going to the gym and doing it and all that and I put a bit too much muscle on yeah. so I'll show you the picture when I come out when I've, I've got an Accrington kit on, and I just look a different person. I'll show you now. Um, was it sort of with Accrington before you left prison? Or no. No. So, as I said, I, I treated it as like a little a camp for myself. Yeah. And I thought, you know what? Didn't have an agent or nothing when I come out. And then one of my mates, he worked for Puma, Andy Taylor, his name is. Mm. And he's quite, a, he's quite well known in the city. Now he looks after a lot of footballers, some good footballers too, and he's end up going on and got some high profile footballers. He done like Andre Gray's moved to there and Be- uh, Wofford and yeah. all that. His big fees and all that, you know what I mean? But he worked his way up. Um and he helped me when I come out and made a few phone calls as he was getting started himself. And he rang Paul Cook, who's now Ipswich manager. He's been Wigan and oh, all yeah, that yeah. Cookie, yeah, Scouser. He was manager at Aki. He said, listen, I've got Liam Moore on you here. He said, he's just come out of prison and he's been at Everton, Southampton, playing with good pedigree, England and this and that, but he's not played for 18 months. Can he come and train? He said, yeah. And then Cookie come down I, to the height and ABC boxing club. I was doing a session. He said, I'll come down and see him. He come down like... Um, the day before I come in, just said, come in, lad, you're looking well. Up there, honestly, just made me feel 10 foot tall. And I went in, and that was just when I could say, like, then I was just on it then. Because I was fighting for my career then. Mm. And I'd understood the importance of living your life properly. And I grasped it all. And it was a big changing moment, and I was on it. And in training, I just felt. Um, like a level above, and I was showing me quality, and I was like, you know, when you're kicking yourself a bit, you yeah. Think, well, imagine I've done this four years ago. Well, you stop like going, going out on, on the weekend at that point. Yeah. yeah. Well, I was on tag, so I couldn't. <laughs> 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 I was still on tag performance when I come out. So seven till seven it was. <laughs> um, but I had no interest. Obviously, I went to jail. I hadn't had the drink for eighteen months. Yeah. So I felt super clean. You know what I mean? like no toxin in the body or whatever and I come out and yeah <laughs> we, I played a friendly v Coventry on a Sunday and then he, he offered me something he said I'm going to offer you something till January the 1st basically saying to me this is a trial period mm. and he put me on 150 quid a week and I was like doesn't matter what he offered me, that I had to take it. But I was playing in League Two professional on 150 pound a week. You know what I mean? Yeah. So it's not even enough to for some people to 
get by, you know what I mean? And I, I wanted to go and get, I was in my mum's, but I wanted to go and get my own place and, and I, I was getting £600 a month to live yeah. on, you know what I mean? And get to train and get my food sorted and that, but you know what, it just made me hungry, Yeah, honestly. And I obviously had people helping me and my dad and my brother and all this helped me. But if I, that was me on my own, you know what I mean? It, but they said, don't worry about money and that. Go and just go and just concentrate on footy. It's like taking a step back to take a step forward, isn't it? So I went down and then I didn't play the first few games and then because um, he had a settled side and it, then I played against Cheltenham. It made me debut my first professional game in years, you know what I mean? Yeah. I thought, wow, my dad come down and watch me. We won 3-0 that debut. It was only like fourth or fifth game of the season. We went top. But actually then we was always scrounging at the bottom, you know, to survive. <laughs> yeah. And we went top. And um, I played 55 minutes because I couldn't breathe. My head looked like that can. <laughs> <laughs> I've got tomato head, I couldn't breathe. But, you know, because I was quite muscular. Yeah. yeah. I think that as well. The more muscle you carry, the more oxygen yeah. your body needs. So I wasn't in shape. I was in shape, but I wasn't in shape to play footy. Mm. So gradually I had to bring my weight down bring the muscle mass down slightly and get back to playing footy. It took me about six, seven games to start feeling fit, but I got on the side and he kept me in the side. But then in the October, well, let's come out, the 55, and then, um, but slowly but surely, we got me fit, my football fitness back, I say mm. this, lads now, I look at, this is, what I, this is why I want to do what I do now. I work with anyone, but I love working with, you know, athletes and footballers, yeah. because, you know, doing a gym session with a footballer is not, they don't need to go on and just do your bench press and lift muscle just to be, look good. Mm. You need to do your work specific to your sport and your craft now, you yeah. know what I mean? So, and that's the sort of the, av- the angle I want to go down, like, being able to offer that, but I also work with, I've just done a circuit before with three 50-year-old fellas within there, you know what I mean? Yeah. Mm. Um, so anyone at any levels of fitness I can work with um, but that's like my passion I'd love to eventually well, I'm going to go back I'm going to go to back to uni and go and get out of, you know even though you know you know in your head and what to do and what you do with the lads and yeah. you know what the job would, ent- would entail in terms of like being in control of the warm ups and recovery sessions and doing a personalised plan for each player through the week and stuff and the injury prevention and all that type of stuff. And you've got to go and have to get the certificate to go with it now. So yeah. I'm going to have to go to uni and go and get the next level degree if I want to go where because I'd love that to be my, I'd love that role, you know, being at Everton or Liverpool yeah. or City or United. As like That's a sports scientist or like an nah, S&C? Like a, like a S&C yeah. coach, yeah. Someone who take the match day warm up and stuff, you know what yeah. I mean? And because I'm like that, doing me personal training now as well, I'd like to, I think, give that extra and like little bits of motivation too, yeah. you know what I mean? And get the lads riled up and rallied up for the, before the game rather than... Cause I've worked with some S&C coaches who just show you what to do, the choir as a mouse, but... Yeah. I to add a bit more to that role, you know what I mean? But yeah. obviously being a pro myself, I know what they'll be feeling like match day two and the day before the game or yeah. what you need that week or you've got two games in a week. No offence to anyone, but, you know, coming out of, you n- never played the game, but you come out of uni, you've got all the right badges. Having that personal experience, you know what I mean? How lads feeling and what do you need after this day or stuff so I'd love that role like you know helping with like what would be on the menu at that the training ground and before yeah. matches and all like that would be a, but at the same time I've got my own gym now and I'm, it's busy and you know got loads of clients and doing well in terms of like getting group sessions going now and then I have personal sessions and whether I keep building that go to a bigger gym or you don't know but I'd, I'd, I'd love the thought of going down that route you know and being at a club one day um, but yeah like life's changed around like fully like you know <laughs> from being like a little teenager to go out for a bevy to like oh 
that, and that's the main reasons because I was I was in that position. So I would have loved someone to have made yeah. it. just. It's your choice. I, mm. as I say, you can lead a horse to water, and that, that one, and some lads will just go one in, uh, in one in. Uh, but you know, without one lad, that'd be enough for me. Because I, looking back, that's exactly what I needed. Do you know what I mean? Do I want to be the person that I needed? Do you know what I mean? For others, yeah. Going forward now, um, I'm, you know, in football, but. Uh, you know, anyone who's playing sports and, you know, you hear of lads and girls who are, you know, swimmers and how how much training they're doing. And mm. honestly, I can understand. Like, I've, heard, I've spoke to lads who've boxed and stuff from a young age and just fell out of love with it because it's relentless. And as we go back to that mindset, you've got to, so you've got to have some pain and desire to keep going. And yeah. Keep going. And then when you made your money, keep going again. And, and that's why I, I believe... The multi-billion pound businesses aren't they? Pay them whatever the fuck you can because these people are elite athletes with elite mindsets. You know what I mean? It's not guaranteed. It's like, for example, say if you go to uni and you want to be a doctor and you do medicine, you probably are going to be a doctor, but you can be like, you can work hard and you can still not make it. So yeah, yeah. Whether that's is luck a real thing or whatever, I don't know, but. I'm a firm believer in you. You work hard, and you get that you've put that work ethic in. Then somewhere along the way, you will be paid back for that work that you're putting in. And if it's with the right intentions in your head, you know what I mean. And everyone has different motivations, whether it's for financial gain or whatever, or fame or whatever. But I can see even what you're doing is a passion for what you're mm. doing. So just I you work hard and and. It's a proper cliche saying as well, isn't it? Yeah. Work, how you get what you work for and all that, but it, it is. It's with that having that work ethic. You and I read a book, um, Pochettino and Guardiola's book, not long back, and people describe them as workaholics. You know what I mean? They are obsessed. You've got to be obsessed. Mm. You do. McGregor said it. You've got to be obsessed. You've got to. First and foremost, you've got to love what you are doing. Yeah. You know, to keep doing it. And there's a good book called Bounce for anyone to read. Is that by Matthew Saeed? Matthew Saeed, yeah. yeah. And it's about, he was a table tennis player. Yeah. And something like, they would train him and a gang of his mates would practice every day relentlessly in his little garage. And something like six of the top ten table tennis players ten years later were from his street. That's mad, that. Not That's not crazy, like the, not the same is, city, the same street. Oh, it might have been four or six. Yeah. And that's how he says no one has a divine right to have a talent. But num- he said the number one thing is have an obsession and a love for what you're doing. But then it's all about practice and he he, he preaches ten thousand hours, doesn't he? Have you seen his other book, uh, Black Box Black Thinking? Black Box Thinking, yeah. I, I never read that one. No, I've read, read a bit of it and it's basically yeah. like if you do something wrong. Mm. You should never do that again, because yeah, yeah. now you should. Because that doesn't work that yeah, time. Yeah, so yeah, why yeah. would you do it again? Yeah, I know. Like Klopp playing that eye line. <laughs> 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 they say don't do what's it. When you're insane is when you keep doing the same thing over and over again and expect different results. Yeah. So, yeah. but I don't know. Sometimes do you have to persevere then as well? If you believe the right, that's the right thing. It's yeah, like you're flogging you know a dead I mean? horse, or yeah. you're, oh, you're shifting mm-hmm. away. Just you're nearly there. Yeah. Depends what you think, like, don't it? Of course, yeah. Some people are just stubborn, aren't they? And they'll keep doing the same thing that they believe is going to work. But, but that's why you need to take help off people as well. You know, you know, there's no shame in getting help and advice off people. Do you feel like you there know? is enough help in football? Because yeah. everyone, everyone sort of loads football like the unbreakable because they don't know all this money and that. But at the end yeah. of the day, they are f- like a person. And all, 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 all money does is take money worries away. That doesn't mean there's no other worries in life. Yeah, yeah. Every, there's a heavy worry in life. All it does just takes. The, oh, you can pay your bills or you drive a nice car. That's fine. But this it only takes money stress away. There's other stresses in life, isn't there? Yeah. All related to everything, family and. Relationships and could be anything, could be anything. Um, they might be even lads Premier League footballers out there now 
who are struggling, even though they're playing in the Premier League, but think I haven't at the heights that I should have. I should be better. Surely I'd be in the England squad. You know what I mean? And we're looking at them, thinking, well, you should be happy. Not me specifically, but people out there, yeah. maybe you should be happy. You're a millionaire. This and that. But he doesn't care about that money. I'm just using an example. Yeah. He cares about how, go- how good he wants to be, and that might play on his mind and get him yeah. down and... Then he's depressed. Like you get depression just just because you're rich, so, you know, doesn't mean that. They always said it only takes money worries away. But you might have a personal thing that you thought you could achieve and you haven't, and that could get you. You know what I mean? So I hope there is more help in football and other sports of 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 that nature because you know you have to battle a lot in your own head and on you know your own a lot of the time. It's dog eat dog. You know what I mean? You know, if you got a contract and it's running out and you and your teammates and he gets off one, you don't, he's not going to go, oh, I'm not going to sign because he's not signed, is he? He's going to crack on and play and you're going, so life goes on. I suppose it's hard you know? for a footballer because there's so few people that do it. So say, if, like, I have a problem. I could say to you, like, I have this problem because you've probably had that problem before because we're at, like, yeah, similar. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Then with a footballer, you'd, like, you could say, oh, I'm worried about this it? and someone's like, oh, yeah, yeah but... You want yeah. that money? I'm well, going to you, work. Can't you just like say this to the manager or whatever? You know. Yeah. 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 It's tough because to be in enough, you've got to be in the environment a bit. You know what I mean? Or, or whatever. Um. So yeah. So you know, you could ask other footballers, whatever. But maybe you're not going. Maybe you're not going to go to your teammate, are you, and say this and that, or someone in the same position as you, and he's stuck. You know. People might stab you in the back. You don't know in that game. You know what I mean? Because yeah. everyone is in it for themselves deep down. So I hope they, I hope they do give more. Even if it's just offered, you don't have to take it. Yeah. yeah. You know what I mean? But just to know that it's there is enough. Sometimes, and sometimes people don't like going to the um, people. You know, mm. they don't want to go to the mum or the dad or the uncle or the brother. You know, they might be more open to a stranger. Mm. You know what I mean? Um, so I hope there's more going forward for footballers and other athletes and other sports and boxers and this and heavy and swimmers whatever golf because everyone as I said even if he's successful he only takes the money but he's away he doesn't take everything away do you know going back to Achmonton Stanley yeah it was your first season 12-13 yeah yeah yeah, yeah, I, was, I, yeah. Was I was watching your highlights the yeah. other day was you oh yeah Oh, yeah, I was just about to say, like, I think he yeah. scored eight goals, was it? Well, th- that I think it was nine in the last 13 games because I was yeah. playing, I come in as a left back, as I said. Mm. Cookie signed me, but then Cookie got a, got a, got a job because we played Chesterfield, right? We mm. were like top of the league, yeah, and League Two, and we'd expect it to go up. And they sacked the manager after a poor start, and we'd played them the week before and got mm. before free. But you should have seen the football we played. And apparently that night, their owner said, we want him as my manager. Because the way we play, we play 4 2 3 1. And we were just interchanged. I play, he, he's the one who pushed me on as a left mid and seen yeah. as a left mid. So I played on the left in a 4 2 3 1. But what he would, would say is going after freedom when we're in possession, you can end up on the right in the 10. And I've always played in at left back, and I was like, "Wow, this is great!" You know what I mean? Uh-huh. I was getting about the pitch, getting on the ball, and that was one thing I've always, you know, back myself with is having a shot and got a left foot, so hit and shoot. And he would say, "Just hit it, <laughs> hit it." You know what I mean? Some of the but goals were proper crackers. There was a few boss free kicks in yeah, there as well. I, again, that was down. To, I honestly believe I always fancy myself a free kick and scored a good number of few in my career. I just think that was practice. Mm. Where I grew up, where my mum still lives, there's like flats and then that grass in front and then a road and then a road, there was a brick wall and it had two lampposts perfectly positioned as a goal. So I'd hit it from the grass verge, pretend that was a goal, use the wall as a wall. <laughs> you know the wall went super high, but I used it as a wall and I'd honestly... I remember being a kid going, I'm not going in now until I hit 20 shots in that top right-hand corner. And he, 
I used to think like that as a kid sometimes, you know what I mean? Yeah. I remember I set myself a challenge of doing 100 keep ups. I think I was eight. I wouldn't go in, I was getting dark, I was getting done at 60, 67, <laughs> starting again, and I got to 100. I always remember feeling, just felt great, you know what I mean? But I, I was just, as I said, I was obsessed. But I believe the free kick practice, and then Kevin Sheedy practiced with me, because he used to say to me, <clears throat> if I told you to pass the ball there now, you could pass it there nine times out of ten, but I tell you to shoot it there. Mm. One time out of ten, so he said, "Why not just pass it?" You know what I mean. But yeah, then, yeah. it's 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 practice. Practice is fine, but it's got to be the right practice. Otherwise, you're practicing the wrong thing. Obviously, you know what I mean. So, and then just that repetitive and 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 having like a little sequence in your head, how many steps you need to take to feel comfortable, and all that. But it was just practice, and and then when you get in that situation, just like what you've done on the Wednesday or something. Try it again, try yeah. it again, try it again. And um, so I believe it was all down to practice. But then, towards the back part of my career, I changed my technique because I used to curl it. And then these balls now just move. So I found a technique, not like where it, like the dippy one would toe one. I mm-hmm. used to just smash it. <laughs> and, and if you hit it in the same way, the ball used to just go yeah. everywhere, honestly. Um, and yeah, the balls from the last the last five or six years, they just move if you catch them in the right spot. So we used to just start blasting it then in the end. And I'd, I'd have a shot, I swear to God, from 40 yards out. I wouldn't be bothered. Especially that season, because it was full of confidence. That last, I always remember arguing with Franny Jeffers in the last game of the season. Um, and I was that wound up. So... I'd had that unbelievable season and I knew he was interested in me then. Yeah. Back at higher levels and stuff. and But Aki went, Aki then league on now and they're doing great with Coley and all that. But then they were still skint. Yeah. Old owners and they were skint, not paying great wages to lads and happy to stay up as long as they were in that bottom two. Do you know what I mean? And, and I had teams in the league above come like Aiden of interest so I knew I was going so last game of the season we were getting beat by Oxford 2-0 it was just that we were safe it was a rubber dead and uh, we'd signed Franny Jeffers for like the last 10 games and he was signed Franny I remember arguing him with him on um because he I hit a shot because we were getting beat I set up and I hit it and I just went hard to stand <laughs> and he just said you're a ball greedy little twat you I was just going, who are you talking to? <laughs> we were arguing as the game's going on. And then this right winger ran down. And I, I swear to God, just ran over. And he just knocked it past me. And I just volleyed his new <laughs> And I was just like, oh my. And I got a straight red in the 89th minute of the last game of the season. So then I joined crew. That's some in the league above. And I was banned for the first three games of the season. All because of that. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? So even then, like even though I, I think little things like that, I just had like a little temper on the pitch with me at times, but I mellowed out over the years and I had children and I'm just, yeah. you know what I mean? It wouldn't even phase me now. But back then I was still young, 23, still young, but um, and aggressive with me play at times. But um, no, as I got older, I chilled out loud, you know what I mean? Just, just to make a game as easy as possible for you use your head more yeah. than you know don't, don't have to dive into things and stuff but yeah when did the decision come to like end your career like, did you know did you have an idea in your head like, at this age I want to do it or no not at age obviously I would have you know it's premature I've only just turned 32 so but um, I left Morecambe I felt a bit hard done by them. I'd done well for them. Played like two seasons in. I played like 90 odd games over two seasons in league and cup. I was a regular, you know what I mean? Mm. I'd done well. And that season I scored a lot of vital goals. But um, I went back, I started playing left back again the last six months of that. But he signed me as a number 10. And I was on a decent wage for what more am I paying? And I think. You pay your, you know, your strikers and 
attack and players get more money left back still you know what I mean? yeah so I think for him to offer another contract I would have had to took a big drop and I think he would have I think he thought that I would have just so or he wasn't room in the budget to afford to because he seen me as a left back then so I left and um that was the first time in my career I was like stuck with the club you know what I mean Really? Um, was that yeah. after like two regular seasons as well? Yeah, full on regular, yeah. And I'd had a good few years playing regular in the league. And I was at a good age of like 28. That's bizarre, that isn't mm. it, really? I said it might have been, he said it was the money thing because they didn't have them. He seen mm. as a left back, not a 10 anymore. And he was, you know, he was already, he'd signed a left back the year before, he still had a year left, so. Could he justify to his board giving two left yeah. backs this money? You don't in League Two, you might only get one full back to cover mm-hmm. that one position. And if he's injured, he might play a right back there or whatever, or a left. Yeah. You know, it's not like the the, the thing in the Prem where you have two full elevens coming. Huh. You know what I mean? Yeah. Um. But then I was a bit couldn't. Then I dropped down to the National League. Well, I got off the contract at Colchester for the wages and to the living costs down there, you know, down in Essex. Mm. So then I got offered the contract in the National League, the one below League Two. And I wanted to stay in the league for as long as possible. But then I had children, so financial become motivation back in the my career for me, you know what yeah. I mean? Um, and I didn't want to move away anymore. I'd done all that. Mm. Wanted to stay in the North West of a good but I signed for a team called Geisley. They offered me like two year contract, but they were part time, so I'd gone. But the money for that they offered to go part time, it was worth it. You know what I mean? I was like, you know what I want to do? I'll go part time and I'll do something on the side, and I didn't, because the money was comfortable to live on, and I was just going training twice a week. I just didn't feel like a footballer, anyway. So played the first. Well, I was a regular for them. Doing all right, you know what I mean? And he, he, their owners had a big thing about wanting to get up, so he splashed a bit of dough into the club and we got some... John Rooney was there and he had some good National League players and lads from the league, but it just didn't happen. He was struggling. The man Drew Sanders got sacked and he brought another manager in, Paul Cox, and he just said, the club's going full-time. But it was like, it took us like, me and John, like two and a half, three hours to get there. Mm. We were like, yeah, well, we're going full-time then. We need more money because mm. we've signed on park and time contracts yeah and he wouldn't budge so then he froze us out so yeah i just um i just stopped going training then honestly and um i said to him that i was stressed and all that and this and that I got signed off by a doctor and didn't go in um, and then it come about that my me, me friend, one of my best mates, Josh Wilson, he's played in, um, he's actually doing, I don't know if you've heard of Svara Radio. Yeah, that new st- I want to, yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, he's involved in that. But he, he played, um, had a good career in, like, non-league or look, and worked as well. Some lads choose to do that, you know what I mean? Because some lads earn good money doing that, playing part-time and then having a good job and working. Mm-hmm. So he he went down that r- role and um, played for some good, teams in the National League, National League North, and he said, why don't you come to Chorley, where I am, and just come, get out of that club and come here till the end of the season. So I said, go on then. They were only in one night a week, trained in Wigan, but I was still contracted to guys, you see, still had like 18 months left, so finished the season off with Chorley. And that, that summer, I said, the year left at guys, and I was like, I don't want to play. I just lost, lost it, and then, Guysley paid me up, like one of them, you know, it comes to an agreement. Mm. And um, then I, s- I got a chance, um, I'd play, I used to play against Ian Ever. He played for like Derby and Blackpool, but I played against me against Chesterfield when he was there. And he just uh, took over as Barrow manager. And um, my agent, not my agent, my mate, who is an agent, but he was never my agent, but he make phone calls for yeah. me in the summer and, that and say whatever he rang him and he said yeah tell him to come down and train for a week and went down give me a bit of new lease of life going you know it was a 
bigger club and that with a good fan base and he played footy the right way and I went there quite motivated to be honest and then um, he signed me a year contract and I was doing alright doing well but then um, back end of the season um, he brought a left back in called Reese Norrington Davis who by the way is, he's going to be a top player then. Yeah. he's come to Barrow on loan mm. a year later he went to Rochdale and this year went to Luton and Chef, he's a Sheffield United player. Chef United recalled him back and then he went on loan again. Now he's at Stoke playing regularly and he's done that in the space of two years from Barrow to Stoke. Mad that way. He's That's a tight. Wales full international, got a cap this year for them. So I reckon you watch out for him. He's a good, yeah. good player. I reckon he'll be Chef Hughes because they're going down. Yeah. Yeah, I reckon he'll be Chef Hughes left back next year. And to be fair, I was in the latter stages of my career and he's just starting. And I seen him, and I seen, hey, that's the way I would play, and I, yeah, yeah, when I and I couldn't do it anymore. Mm. Don't know what it was, whether I didn't have the love for the game, but you know the distances he was covering in the game, and don't know whether he had the drive in me anymore to keep to put that extra in anymore. Yeah, mm. and that was then I left Barrow that summer, and I thought I'm done here. But then I got a phone call saying, would you come to Welsh Premier League? And um, for Bala. So, um, but at that stage when I signed for Bala, I knew I wanted to start my coaching and stuff. But I thought, you know what, I will do that. But I'll play in the Welsh League as well. So I went there last year um, and played... <laughs> Last season as a player, um, oh, I just didn't get the same feeling. I proper fell out of love with the game of playing. Yeah, and I towards the end I started taking the warm ups and stuff, you know, for Valor. Yeah, and stuff, and giving the lads nutrition plans and yeah. sessions in the gym away from the club. So the manager in the summer, he said, "Listen, keep your on. We're registered as a player. We'll offer you another contract." of a reduction but we'll offer you this and but I want you to become strength and conditioning coach too which was that sound yeah but um, so I've done that this year but then a couple of weeks back um, when the gyms have reopened and stuff there's a lot of travelling in the Welsh League mm. and sorry um, I just want to be now in my head the best coach I can be, you know, strength and conditioning coach I yeah. can be. And to do that I need to be out to keep it a hundred percent. You can't have something somewhere else quite yeah. I wanna totally nail this down before I look into what doing other things. You know what I mean? You know, I always say like you shouldn't have just one form of income. Yeah. But for now I wanna nail this down before yeah. I branch off and do other things. What's too, like how I mean? people get in touch in that? Would you wanna um, I don't mean I've got an Instagram account and a Twitter account, um, and they're open and I, and on there there's a lot of like clients I work with, you know, and give them nutrition plans and the transformations they've made, um, like either losing weight or putting on muscle, whatever. Everyone's different and wants different goals, so I make them specific to them, um, and just videos of like the sessions I do for people, you know, when I'm working with them in the gym. Yeah. Taking videos and stuff. And I like to not only just do that, um, is but, but like, put stuff out there to educate people as well, you know, the main type of posts about, could be anything. I could be thinking about something, I think. Maybe people would like to know about that. It was like something the other week come to me, and it was like about post-workout shakes. Yeah. What the importance of them. You know, people go, I need a shake straight after the train and stuff. So uh, I give my views on that and try to educate them through science, basically, and that's what's proven. Yeah. You know what I mean? So I am actually go quite deep into me, the role I'm doing. I'm trying to, like, go to not, I'm not, don't just see myself as a personal trainer. I want to educate people too and, and take it to another level if I can, you know what I mean? I don't see myself more as a strength and conditioning coach, but with the nutrition involved inside and I want to combine like science but with 
my life experiences and yeah. sport too. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? And that that's that's the angle I'm coming at. And obviously not just football but I grew up, remember my dad boxed pro mm -hmm. around gyms and fighters and him and seeing his how he used to diet and stuff and mm. the training he'd do. And um, it's another sport I love love watching like <laughs> I don't know how people get punched in the face for like, <laughs> I like it. We all like it in the pads and the bags, but it's when someone punches back, isn't it? It's a different yeah. story, but fair play to them fighters, martial artists, and them UFC and MMA fighters. We speak to someone here, and the dust, the dust different than I did, the way oh, they think yeah, about stuff, like as you were saying, with elite footballers. The mentality is different. Yeah. I'm like, are you scared? And they're like, no, I can't wait. And it's like, oh. Well, I know, um, well, you know, me mate that was talking about Andy. And yeah. the tailor, the agent, he's really good mates with Paul Kelly. He's had him on. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I've been in Paul's company. He's funny, isn't he? And he's <laughs> yeah. saying, I just love that. He said to me, I just love that taste of blood and the burning in the chest. And I was just thinking, <laughs> mad, isn't it? I, I can enjoy, you get, get joy getting it and that feeling of being it, you know what I mean? But obviously getting it, you get conditioned to it, don't you? You know what yeah. I mean? Yeah. You learn to ride punches or whatever and this and that, but it's still crazy, isn't it? Just, uh, yeah. How can you say you love the taste of the house? That always <laughs> stuck in my head. Um, but he's great, Paul, and I've seen him training a few times. He looks great again, still. Talented fighter, he fought yeah. in the UFC. Yeah. Unbelievable, isn't it? Just like the pinnacle of his sport. Mm. Elite level. It's great. I love hearing the stories of anyone across the city in any sort of type of sport or business. You just want to you know, to see people get to the pinnacle and what they're doing. Proper motivation, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. Well, I'd just say the highlight of your career was. Um, I, I, I reckon making me professional debut. Yeah. Because, as I said, even if I would have just played that one game, mm. all everything I'd done as a kid was worth it. Yeah. Yeah. Them nights of training every day, and staying in and not going out on the streets with my mates and. Every night I went to sleep and said I want to be a professional football in my head over and over again. I did. You know what yeah, I mean? Yeah, So I'd say that was, that was my highlight. Don't get me wrong, I've had some great, great highs, but them highs would never have happened if I never made me debut. Yeah. So to go there and play at Barnsley away for Southampton mm -hmm. and make me debut and say, and you actually clash, you are a professional footballer, mm -hmm. you know what I mean? Yeah, even though you got your contract, if you haven't played the game to me, I don't know, you know what yeah, I mean? yeah. Well, to play my professional contract, I was 19 playing the championship. I was just looking back. It's, I'd, I'd say that, you know what I mean? Making me debut always. And cause, just because I said, because it was all worth it then. Yeah. You know what I mean? Just but even to play the once. Well, do you write in saying that you scored a hat trick at some point for Achmed and Stanley or more? Yeah. Scored two. For Did Achie. you? Yeah, Sco yeah. Two for Achie. Scored one v Barnett. Egg that David's played in that game. <laughs> Did he? <yeah. laughs> that was Same glasses as me on. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, and he got sent off at, at the end. Scored at that game, and then I scored at against. I was saying then Ian Ever, my battle manager, mm, yeah. against Chesterfield. Oh and yeah. Paul Cook was the manager. You <laughs> signed me for Aki. <laughs> but that was later on. I had two spells Aki because mm. I left and then I went back on loan. Yeah. And James Beatty was my manager then. Who, oh yeah. 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 Um, another Everton connection, and I scored at Attrich against them as well. Like on the day were like. I flying at the time and mm. we were down there and we beat them and I got a couple of messages off people off Twitter saying Molly you you're a cunt just lost 500 quid on the bet <laughs> <laughs> and all that. I was like oh. did you start the match balls no? yeah my mum's got that my first match yeah. I got all the Achie lads to sign at the second one Achie kept man said they can't have it because they were 70 quid the ball that's <laughs> 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 not mad <laughs> <laughs> but my mum's got like um because when you play for England, you get proper at any level. You get proper England cap. You get the oh caps. yes, yeah. So she has got the caps in the house, like somewhere. And I think a couple of my family members give them out to people, but obviously you don't know where. I should have just took shirts from clubs and everything. I just mm. didn't think at the time. You know what I mean? Yeah. But it is what it is. Did you have any superstitions before playing? Um, oh, they used to change all the time. <laughs> oh, I'm a bit OCD. Yeah. So. I don't know if not to keep saying and that round, but that's how you stuff I don't need I I'm 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 I know what I'm doing, you know what I mean? Yeah. Like, but I just 
I'm like Tommy Jim if anyone wants to say it's just me inside, you know, <laughs> and space just that's how I feel relaxed, you know what I mean? It's not doesn't affect my life, but I'm a bit like that, you know what yeah. I mean? But so it changed. So I've had a good game. I remember different things sometimes. I put my right boot on first, and then yeah. I changed to put my left boot on first. Um wearing the same warm up attire. Yeah. So I'd wear like tracky bottoms with socks tucked over, <laughs> even if it was in the summer or whatever. <laughs> Um, and a rain jacket, or I don't know. Just thought I remember going through all little stages, but there was not on that still done religiously every yeah. all the time. But I remember going through little like this, and I thought I had to go get my one and do that next <laughs> week and all this stuff. And you sat in the changes and this and that, but not on that ever like was consistent yeah. all the way through. No, yeah. Some people have some mad ones though. Yeah, mad. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, so it's um no look back. I'm grateful that I got the you know a lot of young lads dreams to play professional football. Yeah. I understand that, and even though it's not for Everton or Liverpool, it's still it's still professional yeah. football. So I'm always um grateful and feel really humble by that. You know what I mean? That I got a chance to do that, no matter who it was yeah. for. I still still done it, and and, and I think as I got older. I'm a bit more proud of that now, you know, I can say that a little bit. I, I don't want to sound like it's hit or nothing, you know what I mean? Yeah. Or, but just a little bit. I'm proud, like, I come from a normal council estate in Heighton. I'm a normal family. My dad boxed pro, and don't get me wrong, we didn't have a hard growing up. Mm. My dad had always looked after us and had money, and my mum was great. She'd take me to train and all that, but still, still from a normal estate, you know. We didn't have big yeah. flash house or flash cars, and... Lads off that estate are doing what they're doing, you know what I mean? And and think of where I was brought up, and I still see some of the lads now, and I've gone and play for Sat St. Mary's Ground and all that. Just look back yeah. here and quite proud of that now, you know what I mean? As I got a bit older, I'm very, very like feel a lot of gratitude for it that I got the chance, you know what I mean? Yeah, Pasta. Yeah. You got any more questions? We yeah, finish yeah we always finish on what's your favourite pint? Oh, my favourite pint? Um, I would go with. Um, I'm not a massive drinker now, by the way, but I still yeah. have a drink. I had a couple of um, red wines the weekend with my missus, but pints at Heineken. Heineken, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah like something strong, something, yeah. Yeah, something <laughs> strong. <laughs> oh, funny story, quickly. Um, the year when Southampton said I could go before I joined Plymouth, mm. I got that Dutch agent got on, on back in touch with me. Yeah. And said, do you want to come on trial to NAC Breda? <laughs> in the Dutch league out of yeah. easy so I was like yeah two week thing so Southampton let it happen so I went over anyway trained for two weeks they put me up in a hotel got picked up every day and he actually offered me a contract um, but it was button like it was crap money considering you were playing in the top like I wouldn't have been able to find a hotel um, a gaff to stay in mm. and live on on my own over there and even though it was the top league so that must show you the golf and pay in that league because some Ajax players must be on Blue Steez. Yeah. And they were paying, they were paying like low wages, you know. So for to leave England, it would have to be me worthwhile. Yeah. So anyway, I trained two weeks fresh, was on it, didn't have a bed for you, not on. And the last night, I would, like the last training session before I was going home, the flight was the next morning. Um, and every night I was eating my dinner, and he was a guy at the bar, and he used to come in, and he was Dutch RAF. And he was just having a few pints, about five or six, and just got off. And then last night, I was at the bar, I thought, I'll have a pint. And I seen him every night, same spot, I said to him, what's that you're having? And that, and then I had a pint with him, got talking to him, and I only had four. And I swear to God, I was the most drunk I've ever been. <laughs> like, I spewed up all over the bar. It was called something called Duval. <laughs> and I've looked and it's like 9% oh and I'm just like, oh. <laughs> like it was a cause light or something <laughs> and he's just sitting there drinking after and dead and all of touch the side and I swear to god I've never been so drunk in my life <laughs> but yeah that was a little story there when I was in Holland that time mad, mad, mad life yeah. <laughs> took me everywhere yeah, so thanks very much yeah, yeah, nice one coming on. and don't forget to like and subscribe and we hope you enjoyed it thanks very much nice one